Salli ala Rasul al Karim, Amma Bad. So, yeah, after four months, Alhamdulillah, we are back at uh, Speaker's Corner. Yes, so my friend here, I think we're going to, you're a Christian, right? So, we're going to talk about Christianity. And um, I think the, the topic I want to touch upon is um, what is it in Christianity that if you don't believe in, you'll become a disbeliever? So, what is the main creed or the main. Um, yeah, the, the main creed that you need to believe in in order to remain a Christian. And if you don't believe in that, you, you, you basically are no longer a Christian. What is the most important creed that most, Christianity preaches? Unlike Islam, we don't have very authoritative laws. You've got to understand that first and foremost. Okay. The, the, Christians, the Christians believe, and I'm not, I'm not really like books, I'm really there, but the, the Christians really believe that Jesus came, he fulfilled that covenant, he hasn't, he hasn't stopped the covenant, the old laws, the old testament covenant, but he's fulfilled it, within, within his being, within his person. Well, he then dies on the cross, but before that he says in Luke 14 that through my blood a new covenant will happen, so that, that his, his blood is basically a new covenant that we should follow. Yep. You mean the crucifixion, yeah? Yeah, the crucifixion. Okay. But basically, when he says, drink my blood and eat, eat my bread, during that time in Luke, he also says that um, this, this is my new covenant. So he, he makes up a new covenant. He says in Matthew um, 5, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, around, around those passages, that um, basically, um, he says in Matthew 5 and Matthew 6 that um, the, the two, two of the greatest commandments are to, lo to love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself and to love your God and your heart. So those are the two commandments that all the Old Testament laws were, were helpful. And it makes sense because if you looked, if you looked in the um, Israelite covenant, the real reason why um, the Israelites had to um, be given that covenant is because at the time they were very barbaric. They, they were sacrificing, they were sacrificed to other gods. Okay. They were um, they were committing orgies, they were doing all sorts of madness. So God said, oh, oh, I'll relay with you and, and you can have a covenant with me. And, and, and during that time, you will do the things I want you. So through, through that, he works that covenant. But what, what, what held on to that covenant was to, to his two laws, which is to love your neighbor as yourself and to love your God with all your heart. And that's what we truly believe is, is the two laws we should follow. Up okay. But we do not have an authoritative scheme. It's not like that. It also says in Paul that faith without works is dead. But, but it also says in um, it also says in Matthew and in Luke and in John that anyone who believes in me shall be saved. So it, the, the law is, is this. The law is basically this. It's so is there no central doctrine that you need to believe in order to remain a Christian? For example, if if there was someone, let's say there's a Christian and he doesn't believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, is he still a Christian? No. There you go. So that's what I want to know. Is there got, such doctrines you, that actually take you outside? If you don't believe what Christ did on the cross, then you are obviously not a Christian. Okay, so on the cross, if, if Jesus died and, and someone believes in that, then he is one of the Christians, yeah? Yes. Okay. So who actually died on the cross? Which person of the Trinity died on the cross? The Son. The and son is the, is the one of the person. Okay, so the son died. Yes, the the son. father did not die. The, the Holy Spirit did not die. Right. So according. It was the son's flesh. It was his body that died. It wasn't his his spirit. Because God, as you know from Exodus and as you know from Deuteronomy, God is spirit. So he. No, no. When you say a, when I asked you which person died, which obviously. Person of the shining Godhead. Yeah, that was that was the son. Okay, so according to the Bible, God is immortal. Yeah, God is immortal. Okay, so immortal means. Immortal means that you cannot die, but the spirit does not die. No, wait, wait. Does your spirit die? No, no, no. no so spirit. are you immortal? But no, because I'm created. You see what I mean? No, 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 no. I'm created. I'm a created being. My soul is created. Did every, somebody every, die on the cross? Every angel, every angel is created, but they do not, they do not have, to, they do not, they, they will not face death. So they will not face death. No, but, but you, Whereas we you said the that, second person died. Did you not say that? I said the, sec the fleshy form, the second body. Let me explain it right. The fleshly form of the second person okay. in the body. When you say fleshly form, does flesh exist by itself or does it require a person? For its existence. What, what, what do you consider okay. a person? I'll, I'll tell you what. Flesh doesn't exist by itself. In order for flesh, it's not something that is basically, you know, for example, if I say um, someone who is dead, yes, I say that is a corpse. A corpse doesn't have spirit, it's not a person as such. Yes. yes? So a person needs to die. When you say his flesh died, just like when you die, your flesh dies. Yes. yes. But your flesh is not another person. We say this person died. We don't say his flesh died. We say a person dies. No, no, so no, that's no, the reason no, I asked you. Hear me out. Hear me out before you answer. 
that's the reason I asked you which person of the Trinity died and you said the second person. Yeah, the second person. Okay, but you see a person who dies is by, by uh, what do you say, by, by the definition, let me finish, let me finish. By def it's not semantics. By definition, a person is the one who dies, yes? You cannot say flesh dies because the flesh doesn't have its what own... What makes a person a person? For its ability, its consciousness. Yeah, consciousness. Yes, it's will. Okay, does flesh, does flesh have... Con Once needs, desires, those things... Are does flesh have consciousness? When you're, when you're in a human body, you have these things. So you have wants, you have needs, you have desires, you have a will, right? Yes. So that's a person. That's a person. Yeah, that's, which that's is just defined. That what's make, that's what makes a person. You do yes. not believe that God is a per God's persons are the same as human persons. Yeah, I'm talking about the flesh. You know, because you're separating flesh and a person. Yeah, but we, we do not. Hear me out, hear me out. This is where you're actually falling apart. When you say flesh. Hashim, Hashim. You know, when you, you say not, flesh died, it means he's a separate we person. You do not believe that the. That, that the spirit is a person in the sense that the spirit is a flesh person like the spirit have consciousness believe, yeah the spirit does have consciousness. so he's a person then but, but, but the spirit doesn't have so he's a person the spirit, the spirit doesn't have the wants that you have does the spirit have the wants, the wants that you have the spirit does not answer the question well i am if you, hear, if, you if, if you allow me if you allow me i will answer when you say the spirit yes is the spirit a person or not it's a spirit a person it can be a person but not in the way you describe it how did I? I didn't even describe person. So I don't know. The You're the one who described you, the it. The way you want to enforce this in scripture is you want to say that, that, that basically the flesh is personal and the spirit No, no, I'm saying the flesh is not a person by itself. That same nature of person. No, no. When, when we refer to God, we refer to him differently. Just like the Quran says, God is unlike his creation. So obviously, obviously God, God being free one should be formed. Uh, you, you, I think you still are missing the point. When I say the flesh doesn't exist by itself, the flesh exists. When you talk about the flesh, it has to actually have a person associated with it. Yes. A flesh is not a separate person. So when you say the flesh died, I don't know what that means. Unless you're telling what me the flesh say, is the sec what second person. Is that the, the uh, sorry, spirit, separate person. The spirit is not a separate person. What, what I mean is that the flesh that, that the spirit took upon yeah. died. Or That's what I mean. So who died again? The flesh that took on, no, no, the, the spirit that took on that flesh. Yes. That flesh died and withheld all the sins of my God. Okay, when you say the flesh died, is the flesh part of the Trinity? Doesn't need to be. No, but is it or not? It doesn't need to be. I didn't say if it needs to be or not. I said, is it part no, no, of the no, Trinity? I, I know what you're trying to get at. No, you don't know what I'm getting at. It, it doesn't need to be. Okay. The flesh. Jesus yep. the cross yeah, is yeah. part of the sacrament. So it's, it's okay. sacrificial. If the flesh so is not part of the Trinity and the flesh died, that means none of the person of the Trinity died. You see what I mean? No, it, it doesn't work like that. Because so, how does it work? Again, Jesus. Jesus Jesus, as in the second person of the Trinity, took on a human form, right? Listen closely. Yeah, I heard he took that. On yeah. a human form, and he bodily stepped in, performed, fulfilled his mission on the earth, and then he predicts his own death. He says, he says to one of his disciples, "After three days, I'll be risen up again. I'll die, and then after three days, I'll be risen up again." So he, he knew what he was doing, and it was to fill, it was to fill. Um, the laws of the Old Testament to become the perfect sacrifice as, as per Old Testament doctrine. You've got to understand why Jesus died in the first place. Him, him dying within within that fleshly form, it... How do I explain Him dying in that fleshly form, it wasn't the spirit that died. The spirit is eternal. It always has been eternal, always will be. But the flesh died. And, he, and, and through that sacrifice, he's showing his disciples and the Old Testament followers that he truly is that Messiah that was prophesied to free okay. the world of sin. So if you, you're saying the spirit never dies, yes? Similar to your spirit, right? Your spirit doesn't die. Yes, but my spirit is not eternal. My spirit is not eternal. Remember, God's spirit is eternal, immaterial, uncreated. No, but the term, what is immortal? How do you define immortal? I find it, I find immortal as something that cannot, that cannot perish and has existed for all eternity. No, there's a difference between eternal and immortal. What, and what, what and an immortal being never ever dies. Have you ever met an immortal being? I haven't met an immortal being because then, then how do you know that's because there's how, only one sure. because because there's only one immortal and that is God Almighty. Right. Yes. When he says in the Bible in First Timothy chapter six verse sixteen that he alone is immortal. He alone is immortal. Right. That means neither you nor me nor Jesus except God Almighty is immortal. Oh, no, sorry, no. Did you read the did you read the rest of the passage? First Timothy 616. Have you read it? Yes. Okay. Define immortal from the context of that word. He alone is immortal and nobody else is. Right. Go on. You, you 
you've got, you've got to look at it in this context. First, well, look at it in context, yeah, I don't mind. In fact, I'll get out just to be certain. Yeah, that is. He alone is immortal who lives in an approachable light whom no man has seen or can see. You don't Did people. That Jesus resurrected then? Sorry again, I didn't believe he died. Forget about resurrecting. Yeah, he doesn't believe that he died. So. But he will die eventually and he's going to, he's going to well, resurrect like everyone else. First, first, Timothy, first Timothy, Timothy 6 16. I believe he's the Messiah. But I believe that he ascended, he did not die. I, don't, I think Jesus is a servant of God. He's a Messiah, he's a prophet, he's a messenger, and he will come in the second coming again. He hasn't died, no. I, I believe he ascended. As, as a Muslim, I believe that he ascended. So if you look at... Uh, if it, the crucifixion did not no, happen. No, the crucifixion no, happened, no, but Jesus is not the one who was crucified or died. Passion. Passion. All right. yeah. so let's, read, let's read this in context now. Yeah, go, on. Out, go on. So a couple of verses before it reads. Yeah, no that thou keep this commandment without spout, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is blessed and who is appointed. The mm. King of kings and the Lord of lords, now this is still speaking of Jesus Christ, who only have immort immortality, dwelling in light which no man can approach un unto, whom no man have seen. So no one saw Jesus, eh? No, no, people have seen Jesus. But you said that's about Jesus. Have you seen the Spirit of God? Wait, 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 wait have, a minute. No, 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 you said this is about Jesus, but then the very verse that you quoted says seen, no one has seen him. Seen, what does it mean? the entirety of God's Spirit, yes or no? Entirety of God's I didn't see God at all. Forget about entirety of His Spirit. How we, how we, how we you cannot God, see God and live. How we view God is that God is one being. Why shouting? Calm down. I'm, I'm, you I'm are okay until now. I'm shouting because the king. No need to shout. You can I talk. Shout if you, if you, if you talk I didn't talk over. You asked me a question and I was answering. Did people see Jesus or not? That's all you need to answer. Did they see Jesus? Gone. How we view God is that God is one being within three persons. That's not in the Bible. You have not seen. That's not in the Bible. You have not seen. You have That's not, not in the Bible. Seen, bro, can you allow me to finish? Yeah, go on. You have not seen the entirety of the Godhead. So to take one Neither passion out of, out, of the, out of context, to take one passion out of context, you don't listen to me when you need to talk, take one passion out of context and to claim, or where that claims that there is no trinity and that Christ is not defined, this proves your You know, before point. you act, that Christ is defined, before you, before you say three persons, let's go, let's go to now you're talking over me? No, 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 no. Before you say three persons in let's one being, you need to prove that from the Bible first. I'll prove it. Go on, prove it to me. Let's go to Make Hebrews. sure he says three persons in let's, one being. Bro, bro. Let's go to Hebrews. Yeah. One Actually, no, let's go to Hebrews 8 to 12. Just to prove it. Hebrews what? Hebrews 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Yeah. 8 to 12. You mean Hebrews no, no, 1, 8 yeah, to 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Okay. Make sure you read verse 9 in that. Because he says, your God. I know what he's going to bring up. He's going to say the but Father called him. Are you going to listen? Yeah, go on. Yeah. So this, this is the Lord speaking. Yeah. Unto which of the angels said he at any time? So this is, this is the person that, that is with the Spirit as well. <laughs> Sorry, it's too noisy. Is it okay if we move here, guys? Yeah, Camera, go yeah. Any black guy yeah, okay? But, but, yeah, anyway, let, let, me, let me just read this passage. But unto the Son he hath saved, Thy phone, O God, so it's saying, Your phone, O God, so it's called in Jesus God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thy Lord in the beginning has, and thou, Lord, sorry, thou, Lord, to, to make it known that this is Jesus that God is speaking to, and thou, Lord, in means your God. In the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of his hand, of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fulfill. Okay. So this is God speaking specifically about Jesus. Where does it say three persons in one being? Because that's what you were going to prove. I'm, pro I'm proving that God is trying. So you, you, you have to allow me to finish. How long are you going to take? I mean, you have you have quoted this verse. There's no mention of three persons in one being. It says there, God the Father is telling Jesus, you God. And then later on in the next verse, in verse 9, uh, Hebrews 1, 9, it says, your God. That means Jesus has a God. Do you believe that? No, it doesn't say, it doesn't say your God. Doesn't you, say your God or your... Okay, yeah. which that's is that the King James story. version? Which one version is that? It, it, any, you could read any version. Story. Okay, I'll bring up the NIV. That's the normally one, the, the one I normally uh, refer to. So Hebrews one nine. 
You said it doesn't say your God, yeah? Yes. Okay. Which which is your version, just out of interest? Which version of the Bible? My version is the, it was the KJV I was reading it from. Okay, it says here, it brought up the ESV. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God. All right? Any other Christians that don't agree with this? Shall I read another one? New Living Testament. Oh, yes? So what, what, wait, wait, wait. What, you love no, justice no, 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 and no, no, hate no, no, evil. Therefore, oh God, Hashim. your God. That means Jesus. Do you agree Hashim. Jesus as a God? You ignore the fact that he calls him God in that same chapter. Yes, it does. Yes. I don't disagree with that. If you don't disagree with that, what, what problem have you got with the verse? Himself? I'll tell you what the problem is. Oh, so, the problem? God the Father is calling Jesus, oh God. Yes. Yes? And then in verse 8, Hebrews 1, 8. And then in Hebrews 1, 9, it says... God, your God. Yes, God okay, so, is a being, right? so, so wait, wait. God is a being, right? Wait a minute. I'm a, you ask me a question, I'm, I'm answering. Now you need to have patience to believe that. It says your God. I know you were away earlier, but if you don't believe it, this is what it says. So it right. says Jesus, to Jesus, well, your bro, God. You're not making a point. Get I am. If you allow me, point. if you allow me uh, patience, you need to. Get so when, Jesus, when it says to Jesus, your God, do you agree first and foremost that Jesus has a God? I agree. That Jesus is God, as mentioned in the chapter. Does he have a God, God, yes or no? Which you ignored the passage where he clearly calls him God. He calls Jesus God. I didn't disagree, I agreed with you. So if you agree with that, then you agree that he is God and that yeah, the Father Jesus is God. No, 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 no. Don't put words in my mouth. See, I've answered your question. Will bro, you answer my question? Bro, Does bro, Jesus bro, have a God bro, according bro, to this bro, passage bro, as well? Bro, bro, Do you agree or bro, not? Bro. You see, the reason he's not answering, and I answered, I said, yes, Jesus is called God. But does it mean, does it mean the almighty God? No. Because if you read John 10, 34, no, I'm relaxed, don't worry. Oh, oh, you want to go to John, you want to go to John 20? No, no, John 10, 34. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go to John 10, 10 30. Why are you shaking? Calm down, calm down. You're all nervous. You're all nervous. What does Jesus say in John 10, First, you need to answer my question. Does Jesus have a God or not? What does Jesus say in 10, John 10, 30? I will come there. First, answer this question. I and the Father are one. And what is it in 10, 34? Do you know? What? What is this in 1034? The, the thing is, you didn't are, remember that bit. Ignoring, I'm ignoring. not ignoring. I was you're going ignoring. there. But it, the reason you are reluctant to answer my clear question is this. That don't exist. If Jesus himself says that he has a God, who are we to dispute? For example, in John... He calls him God literally in the same passage. The Father calls Jesus God in the same passage. Bro. I've already if agreed. How many times have I to repeat this? Bro, if you're going to read from Hebrews 8 to 12... You've got to understand the But why are you disagreeing with verse 9? Where he says you're God. Why do you disagree with that? At least I answer the question, but you're reluctant to answer. The reason he's reluctant to answer, when he says you're God, when God himself says you're God, he doesn't want to disagree. He says that the Son is God. You're shouting again. Calm down. I have to shout because you're not listening. Oh, so in order for you, for me to listen, you have to shout. Wow. Where's the logic in that? There's no Trinity yet. You haven't shown the Trinity. Do you want to know Remember, he says three persons in one being. The topic was, is Jesus God? No, the topic was three persons in one being. Yes. Show me that from the Bible. So far, you have failed miserably. You could go to John 5, 7 and see that. Go on, go on. Bring first John 5, 7. The one that has been discarded yeah, by yeah, most yeah. No, of the Bible, except the KJV. I know he has. Why? No, I'm, I'm saying... Why is it discarded? Bro, if you wanted to see that, <laughs> if you wanted to see that, you could go with it. Why has it been discarded? Tell me. Bro, as we under, as See, no you, answer still. As I've told you, the Trinity works like this. God is one being in the three persons. Show me that in the Bible. You keep saying it. You I'm know, when I repeat I'm something, doesn't you, mean it's true. No, I'm not. <laughs> Actually, I give you many all right, chances. All right, all right, all right, I'll show you. I'll okay, show you three persons in one being. So he's failed attempt one. This is second attempt. Go on. I, I've not failed anything. Actually, you, you have. You haven't shown yeah, three you're persons you're in one being. Talking, though, so that's right. He showed me Hebrews 1, 8 and 9. No, you. by the time you bring it up, hopefully I'll explain to them. The first attempt was Hebrews 1, 8 and 9. There was no mention of three persons or the three persons are one being. What you want. Well, you, it's, it's up to you the public to make up the mind. Up okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 one minute. There's got nothing to do with Trinity. John 5, John 5, 2, no, John 5, 2, 5, John 5, 2, 6 and John 6, 6, 3. Yeah, read it. All three persons in the Godhead revive people and give them life. It doesn't say they are one. That is the whole point I wanted to prove. What's the word for one in the, in, in, in the Israelite Bible? Ikad. Ahad. Ikad mean? Ahad. Ahad, when it's, when it's associated with God Almighty, for example, in Deuteronomy 6 4, when it so says, when, well, when, you asked me a question, when, when allow shoes, me to answer. When it's shoes, when allow it's me shoes. to answer, you asked me a question. It's a two way conversation. 
Are you going to continue? Yes, I will. If you if you okay, don't if you, if you don't stop, up, yeah, practice what you preach. So what I'm saying is that when I had when the term I had, whether in Arabic or in Hebrew, and it's almost the identical word, when it is. I didn't say I had. I said ikhad. Ikhad is another word, okay, in Hebrew. Go and find out. There are different words. Bro, bro, the word, the word will you allow me to finish now? Okay, you can you, means, you can bro. criticize. Okay, what does it mean? Right, the word ikad means one, yeah? But how in, in which way one? When God says I was answering, that, if you allow me, you become one flesh. What does he mean? You know, do you always do this? Do you always intro when I'm answering? Bro, bro, bro. If God says you become one ikad, one flesh, what does it mean? If you heard me, if you let me finish. Does it mean that Adam and Eve are one person? Can I finish? Without you interrupting? Without you interrupting, he asked me what is the meaning of the term ahad. Okay, the term ahad in Hebrew, when it's when it's used in Deuteronomy 6:4, it is relevant not to your spouse. It is relevant to God. So when it is associated with God Almighty, allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Deuteronomy 6:4 is talking about God, God Almighty. Yes, Shema Israel. Yes, this is talking here, O Israel. Yes. It's talking in relevance to God Almighty, not to your spouse. Yeah, here, oh yes, You're doing it your again. Lord, your God, your Lord is one. How many gods is that? Is it three? No, it's, it's only three, one. It's only three, one. Three. If you allow me to finish. How many persons is it? Okay, if you don't let me finish. Your Lord, then, your God. Then your you Lord, don't have the right to say that I'm talking over you. Bro, you've been talking over me the whole time. No, I'm not. I'm answering yeah, your no, question, you have, but you, you keep have, interrupting. You so when he talks, you go ask any you Hebrew person whether they believe in the Trinity and they'll say gladly, and explicitly, no, they don't. They believe in one Unitarian God. Just like Jesus did in John 7 and 3. Yes, this is eternal life that they may know you, the Father, the only true God. From Jesus' own testimony. And even then, these Trinitarians will deny it. What is the purpose of Jesus then? purpose of Jesus, like every prophet, is to bring them to one God. Like Jesus says, I, by myself, can do nothing. He's, he's demonstrating that he is just a servant of God. Are you going to allow me to talk now? If you allow me, then yes, I will. Well, well Jesus is deity is prophesied by the Bible. Jesus Mark, doesn't look say he's Almighty Mark, God. Let's look at Mark 1 1. Mark, no, 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 one minute, one minute. I'm still looking Mark, for the one, three in one. Mark 1 1. Don't change the topic. Three. I'm looking Jesus, for the three in one. Jesus is prophesied as the one who come, as, as the Lord who comes to his temple, right? And in Malachi 3, the Lord says clearly, let me read it to you, just to show that I, I, I'm not making this up. Malachi 3 says God doesn't change. Your God changed from divine to flesh and divine. Let's just read the passage, bro, because when I was That is a change in nature. When I was talking over you, like... What was that? Okay, so I got one, two, three Christians. one for you and one for everybody else. Why don't you shut up, Hashim? Just keep talking, bro. Oh, you don't like it now? When I interrupt. Bro, says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. So this is talking about John in Mark 1. Yeah. And the Lord whom you seek seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. What does that have to do three in one? Nothing. This is Malachi I want you to prove the three in one, one being. Mark, That's Mark all. One, one. So far, you're Mark failing. One, one. I'm you sorry. To what I'm Mark 1 1 clearly says, let me show you here. Yeah? <laughs> How many verses is shown so far? None of them Mark one, one. claim three in one being. None of them. You see, this is their central doctrine. And not one place in the Bible does it explicitly say that God Almighty is three in one being. Yes? Look at the, the Muslims. We have so many Try places in the Quran where it says name. Allah is one. So I'm just going to keep the of the gospel of the Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So you remember what I said earlier, right? No three in one being. As yet. it is written in the prophets, behold, I send, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before me. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So that talk, baptism that, that of chapter, repentance. Remember that, that. Verse, that verse in that verse in Malachi three yeah. was referring to God coming to His temple. That temple was Jesus Christ. Where does it say God in there? You just made it up. It He's saying that Lord, is referring to God. It says the Lord will come to His temple in Malachi three. Yeah, but Abraham is called the Lord. That doesn't make him God. No, no. In fact, okay, Moses is called Adonai. Elohim. Does it make him God? Read the Hebrew. It's Har Adonai in Hebrew. That is Lord. That's the only. That's the term used for Lord in the Hebrew Bible when it's referring to God. Har Adonai. Does it say Adonai over there? Does that's it say Adonai bro, over there? Bro, no, it doesn't. Bible. This, it says this, this the reason. The reason. Look. This is an English translation. This debate is about three in one now, and he hasn't. He has failed so far to show. Show me the three I in one. You that all three persons in the Trinity give life. That means you got three I gods. Told you that, Jesus. that proves you got three gods. It doesn't say no, they are no, one. No, the son of Venus, Sorry? No, he did not. In fact, he says, 
I go to my God and your God. In in John 2017, when Jesus himself says, I go to my God. You see, the Father will never say my God. Yes, I go to my God as in almighty God. But Jesus says, I go to my God. In fact, John 7 and 3 is so clear that you Trinitarians will actually have no way out. Have you read 75? Have you read John 75? John 7 and 5. John yes, I have. It talks about having glory with the Father before the world began. Yeah, so? What so what? So what? So what? Where does it say no, that no, no, glory? No, no, no. Where does what it say? Why did you run from 3 what to 5? prophet in the Quran had eternal relationship with the Father Second? before yeah, the world began. Not Muhammad, not Musa, was that? not any of your other prophets, just Jesus. Now I'm wondering, is he more... Why is he comparing his God to my prophets? You see, this is the reality because they, in their the subconscious, to believe that God crack. is not Thank Jesus, you. he's a prophet. I'm using your own standards to debunk your crap. No, you haven't. John 73 debunks you. Jesus himself debunks you. Who is the only... Okay, let's see if you're honest and you'll answer even one question of mine. According to John 73, who is the only true God? Is the, oh, I'll read it from the pastor. Let me read it from the pastor. Yeah. So he remembers verse 5, not 3. How convenient. Make sure you answer you my have, question you this read, time. You haven't, you haven't read the whole passage. Even I have read all. I've read the whole chapter. You didn't read John 1.14. 1. You didn't read John 1, 14. I don't need you don't to. We are talking about the Trinity. But let's just talk about None of John that has got to do with the Trinity. Let's take things out of context again. Read right? it and, and then answer me. Let's take things out my context. question was this. According to John 73, who is the only true God according to Jesus Christ? Let's see if you'll answer even one question of mine. Yeah, Jesus said the Father is much more greater than I, yeah? He come on, he come to earth in flesh, didn't he, yeah? What do you say the Father is greater than I? So this is John 73. Okay, right? he's going to answer the question And this now. is life eternal, that they might know that thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Yeah, so who's the only, who's the only true God? And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Yeah, who's the only true God? They're answer. Both God, bro. Both are God. Both are God, bro. <laughs> do you agree with that? Yeah, really no, no, no. And then you the read, question I ask, will you stop? Will you stop it now? And then you read stop. The passage okay. John 73 says, after, This is eternal life that they know you. Who is the you? So far, you believe in tritheism. Three. So the Father gives life, the Holy Spirit gives life, and Jesus gives life. That means He has three gods. It doesn't say they are one being, does it? Nowhere in the Bible does it say they are one being. If that was the case, then Jesus wouldn't say, I go to my God and your God. Yes? The reason Jesus acknowledges that he has a God and he says, I cannot do anything by myself in John 5.30. What kind of a God says this? What's the context of the passage? Has you? What kind what's of a... What should I answer you? You don't answer on your no, no, my no, no, question. No, no. Answer the question. So do you want to answer or not? What's the context of the passage? Has you? I know why you're running because you don't want to... No, because he doesn't want to answer the question. That's why. It's game over I asked, I asked him in John 17.3 when he says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He is distinguishing between the only true God, the Father, and Jesus Christ. Do you not realize that? There are two, there are two entities there when Jesus says, the only true God. Yes? The only true God is the Father. That's it. That's the end of, that's the end of Trinity. where Jesus says, I am. And if you look in Exodus 3.14, You're done, bro. You're done. No, so you want to go to what you want to go to five now? So now we have established that Jesus, so according to Jesus, him, you don't have an argument, you can't even face bye bye. Him. So, so, dog, so, 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 the truth comes out now. So, you think he's a real Christian now? No, no, you haven't been destroyed. I have the question, show me three in one. He hasn't showed anything. No, I, I did. In I fact, showed you what? Three, three in one. You haven't showed me three in one. You, no, you showed me three, not I've there one. That the only things that he could, that Jesus could do, that the Spirit could do, and that the Father could do, is all the attributes of deity. That's called the fallacy of false equivocation. You know why? Because I'll tell you why. Imagine this: somebody says an orange is a fruit, yes, and an apple is a fruit. And then you say the apple is the orange. That's what he has just done. Where it's called the false equivalence fallacy. The yes? Quran? The reason, the reason where he cannot the answer. Wait a minute. The where reason. The Quran, wait a minute. The reason he says. The reason he cannot show me a single yeah. verse from the Bible that shows that these three are where one the being Lord. itself. You know why the Christians took 300 years to establish the doctrine of Trinity? Okay, anyway, I don't think he's capable of a dialogue. So let me talk to you. Are you okay for that? Okay, you wanted to discuss verse 5. You're done, bro. You're finished. Say again? No, I said the Trinity doctrine 
was established in the Council of Nicaea and no, the, no, wait, no, wait, no, no, Council no, no, of Nicaea no, no, and the Council of the Council of Nicaea was about the it was about the, the nature of the data request. Get it right. Council of Nicaea and the Council of Constantinople. The Council of Constantinople is where it was established. And Alexandria in the year 381. Athanasius of Alexandria. Constantinople Council. Bro, you're done now. Come on. Let me talk to someone who is capable of dialogue. It was about the nature of his dating. It wasn't about okay. his dating. Let's go that way. Because before that, only yeah? What's the name? It's Kesh. Kesh? Yeah. All right, Kesh, let's talk over there if you don't mind. Well, yeah? I've, 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 I have the right to talk to whom I want. Yes, you do have the right. If yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he yeah. he insulted yeah. my prophet, well, well, I did not insult any of his well, prophets. No, no, you, you, you that is a, that is the kind of person me. he is. Yeah. You've insulted me. How? Insulted me. How did I insult you? You've insulted me. You've insulted How? Me. How did I insult you? Because you you really want to conflate that Jesus isn't God, so you've insulted. Oh, so me. if I say Jesus is not God, I'm insulting him. Yes, you are. Well, I didn't know you had such a thin skin, man. Jesus himself did not say he was God. It's basically saying this, the history of Muhammad, yeah? What do you think of the history of Moses? Well, you want to tell me the For example, Moses in the in the Old Testament, yeah. he actually, by your God, by your well, trinity. Well, okay, so in the, in the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus says, did God establish, did God establish a covenant with Moses? Yes. Why would he establish a covenant with someone who is not a moral person? Why? Why would, why would anybody establish, why would Allah have established any covenant with, with, with um, Muhammad at all? Because you... Muhammad, Muhammad had sins, didn't he? And Moses? Yes, he was, he was sinful as well. So? But we do not... What does that tell? We do the not guy believe. doesn't realize what he's saying. Actually, if God can actually, establish covenant with sinners, then there is no problem, is there? We do not believe that he's the best example of mankind. We believe that Christ was. Show me yeah. where Christ did anything that Moses done. Show me where Christ okay. did anything that David did. Did Christ? Show me where Christ did anything that Muhammad did. Okay, Christ agrees with killing of unruly children. Where? Matthew 5, where? 3 and 4. Where? where? Matthew 5, 3 and 4. No, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Read it. That's a parable. That's a parable. Read it, it's not a parable. That's a parable. Is that a parable? Yeah, it's so a we parable. got two Christians here saying it's a parable. A parable. Okay, if I'm a liar, <laughs> prove, me, prove me from there. Remember that they both what? called me a liar, bro, and they said it's a parable. No, 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 bro, 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 wait. I can handle it, bro, don't worry. Do I can handle them both. He said it's a parable. He said it's a parable. Matthew 15, 3 and 4. Sorry, 15, uh, verse 3 and 4. That passage, but no, you haven't. All right, Matthew. All right, let's, let's go to Matthew 15. Yeah, what is it Matthew 15, 3 and 4? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you remember what it is if you've read it? Is a hint, is a command of God. But he also asked them, uh, uh, and, and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress your commandment of your God? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curse if that curse if father or mother, let them be them die to death. But you say, Whoever shall say, shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited. So where's the parable? What's the context? Where's the parable? What's the context? Where's the parable? What's the context of the parish? You should know it's your Bible. You said it's a parable and you called me a liar. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, isn't he? Yes, he is. So is he speaking about a commandment he's bringing or is he speaking about a Pharisee? He's no, he said the command of God. He's speaking Did you not read God. it? Yeah, it was, a, it was a command of God back in the Old Testament times during the Israelites. So it's not a parable. So it's not, it's not, no, no, it has nothing to do with what Jesus, Is it a parable? You said that Jesus brought that commandment. He's not answering now. Is it a parable? Jesus didn't. It wasn't Jesus who brought that commandment. Why did he bring it up? He was reciting, he was reciting he was what God Testament. said during the Israelites' covenant. But he's that God. Their covenant. But he's God, right? I just told you we've got a new covenant, bro. And anybody can watch this. Can we, but you we said it's a parable. Yeah, I told him we have okay. a new covenant. Now, do you think it's a parable? Do you still think? Because he won't yeah. answer that. I know this guy's insincere. He won't answer it. Bro, you're insincere. Is he a parable? That wasn't a parable. As, but it wasn't a command. He's it wasn't a command. So he's saying, it's not a command? It wasn't a command. It specifically says that command of God. But it is a command of God, right? He's taking out. Of, he's yeah, he's no, in a command of God. It's a, it's a command of God. It's and is Jesus a God? So is Jesus' yeah. command? No, it's no, not. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. So yeah. the guy called me a liar. He called me. He said he's a liar. I've destroyed him now. All right, I think we should end this because he's insincere. It was a different covenant. Jesus came to fulfill that covenant. You're done. You're done. You're finished. He fulfilled yeah. everything. Has shimmed. Do you want to speak? I will speak to you because he he just got exposed badly. So he said, where did Jesus command something really bad? Yeah, he says, anyone who, anyone who curses the mother or father shall be put to death. And he calls that a command of God, not a parable. Okay? So this insincere Christian Trinitarian, he has to agree that the command of God includes Jesus. So Jesus is okay with killing children who curse the mother or father. I just did. Matthew 15, 3 and 4. You're done. You're done. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.